The Post Millennial just released an article showing that Zoe Quinn may not have been telling the entire truth about what happened with Alec Holoka. So not only will we be talking about the problems with this situation, I think a lot of people are missing the main aspect of this story when it comes to the tragic loss of Alec Holoka. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I try to do is take different topics going on in the YouTube community or pop culture and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. And something I'm really passionate about is mental health. So if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. You can also follow me over on Instagram and Twitter at The Rewired Soul. If you ever wanna reach out, DM me, but just follow me and keep up to date with what I've got going on. All right, so yeah, uh, a new article just came out from the Post Millennial. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. You can check it out down in the description below. But basically, for those of you who aren't caught up to speed, I've done some other videos about this, but Zoe Quinn made some serious allegations against Alec Holoka when they were dating years ago. This resulted in him being fired from his job and he unfortunately took his own life within the next week. And the internet has been in an uproar about this. It's been this divisive state of people saying, you know, believe victims or, you know, we need proof and, you know, due process and all that kind of stuff. And like I said, I've talked about that in depth in other videos, all right? Cancel culture is an awful thing. The court of public opinion is brutal. Hate mobs are terrible. And I don't think anybody out there is saying that Alec was completely innocent, but mob justice is not the way to go. Well, anyway, some of Zoe Quinn's main allegations were, you know, emotional abuse. Um, she said that he kept her isolated from everybody else, wouldn't let her leave. And there was a story about a plane ticket he was supposed to buy her so she can leave and all sorts of things. But anyways, the post-millennial went back and found tweets from Zoe Quinn around that time and things aren't adding up, all right? And I have no problem playing devil's advocate for both sides of this story, but basically what the article was showing was this doesn't seem like somebody who was in distress and trying to escape the situation. She did interviews with Alec. It seemed like, you know, she was in a very loving relationship and everything like that. Like, I, I personally, as somebody who has worked with many, many people who struggle with trauma and everything, like, it's not, it's not a good barometer to be like, well, look, they, they acted like they were fine. Like, there are plenty of people who are in abusive relationships who act like everything's fine. But I understand, especially based on Zoe Quinn's history, why people feel that she's lying. And she might be, we don't know, all right? But like I said, I just don't think that's strong enough evidence to be like, look, she seemed fine, all right? But anyways, like the main aspect of this story that I think people are really losing in all the anger over the loss of Alec and Zoe Quinn coming back up in, you know, recent talks and everything. Like everybody is just so furious and everything. Like, man, whenever, whenever a life is lost due to mental illness, like we gotta talk about it. And man, like, I just, I don't want any of these tragic losses to be in vain. Like the other day I made a video about Mac Miller, you know, they arrested his drug dealer. And like, there's things that we need to learn from these situations. And when it comes to the story about Alec Holoka, like we need to be talking about subjects such as like forgiveness, redemption, remorse, growth, like all of these things. Because here's the thing, at the end of the day, I don't think that there's anybody out there who's logical that thinks that Alec was completely innocent. You know, worst case scenario, Zoe Quinn did lie and she exaggerated things, right? But Alec, by his own admission and even the admission of his sister, Alec struggled with mental illness. He struggled with personality disorders. And I talked about this before, all right? And I, I made a video about that 
awful media post that his former partner Scott Benson made and everything. But I think, again, like the main point of this is we're all we're all getting so lost in this, like who to be angry at and who to blame. Because when I think about it, I think of the thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who are watching this story unfold, waiting for updates and everything like you guys. There are people in your life who are just like Alec Holoka, all right? Where they were struggling with mental illness, they did terrible, awful things. They might've been verbally or emotionally abusive and things like that, and you refuse to forgive them, right? And I get it, it's hard, but man, like, I've had to go through this process myself. Like I grew up with an alcoholic mom. She did not get sober until I was 20 years old. And she is coming up on 14 years sober, okay? Like I don't continue to bring up her past. And that is one of the primary issues that people have with what Zoe Quinn did. But the problem is, is it's so easy to sit online, be behind your computer screen or behind your cell phone screen or whatever it is and just, write all this outrage, but like, what's going on in your own life? Who are the people who were struggling with mental illness that hurt you in the past, that you're still holding resentments against, right? Like, this is happening to all of us and we need to look at it and we need to address it. And no, I'm not saying that you should go make up with everybody who's hurt you, but I think it's an important conversation to have that hurt people hurt people. Like when Alec Holoka's sister came out, she talked about how Alec was a victim of abuse himself. And there are so, so many mental illnesses, so many mental illnesses that stem from trauma. Like something I've been very vocal about is I absolutely hate the stigma around borderline personality disorder. All right, like I get it. I get that people with borderline personality disorder hurt a lot of people in their path and I think they need to take responsibility and go get treatment, go get help. They shouldn't just get a free pass to just treat everybody like garbage. But I do feel that there needs to be some level of empathy because most people, most people with borderline personality disorder and even other personality disorders, they were a victim of some kind of abuse growing up, all right? and. When I bring this up, this is also a message to anybody out there who is a parent uh, like I am, or if you're younger and you're going to be a parent, like understand this, like this is, this is why we need to have our parenting game in check, all right? This is why we can't just have kids for the sake of having kids and all these like, it is our responsibility to protect these kids because if, we don't, they become messed up adults. Like those of you who don't know me, I ended up becoming a drug addict and alcoholic. I have struggled with mental illness. And yes, being the son of an alcoholic mom and experiencing all of that and the traumatic things that I've witnessed, that was a, a very big factor in how I spent almost a decade ruining my life, right? But. I then got to a point where I took responsibility for this thing. So I'm not saying to let everybody off the hook. That is not what I'm saying at all, but I just wish that when we talk about these stories about what happened with Zoe Quinn and Alec Holoka, that we just have a little bit more empathy and understand that these people have gone through something and they need help. Like if you're in an abusive relationship, leave like you you are not there to fix them you are not there to save them they need to get help on their own if if you're sitting around waiting for them to get help you might wait around forever but what's incredibly sad about the story of Alec Holoka is he was working on it man like he was working on getting better and people who knew him recently knew that he was going to therapy and trying to get you know his emotions in check so he wasn't that awful person. And like one of the reasons that I, I, I talk about this aspect of it is, I used to be a really terrible person, man, a really awful person and I've worked really hard the last seven years to become 
a better person and not make those mistakes that I used to. And we, we need to ask ourselves, uh, you know, at some point, like, would I want somebody to forgive me for what I've done if I'm working this hard to improve myself? You know what I mean? Um, it's, it's just a messed up story all around, but I, 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 I feel obligated to cover this story because I just, I just think that people are watching this story unfold just so they can be angry at people like Zoe Quinn and every everybody who was part of the Gamergate movement. But I want you to look at your own lives and see how this might be affecting your relationships with people you know. You know what I mean? But anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel in other ways, like buying my books and merch and all that kind of good stuff. All right, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.